Okay, so in this video, we're going to kind of do an introduction to work holding, um, its importance regarding the, the safety, uh, your, your safety. I mean, this is very, very, very key. Uh, definitely a topic that you need to pay attention to and, and is often overlooked or skipped over. And we'll do a little bit on tool workforce as well. So the purpose of work holding on the lathe is that typically on the lathe, you'll have a piece that's secured and doesn't move other than rotation. At least that's the idea. You don't want this piece to go flying off or move in or out or to flex or to bend because you're going to be moving your tooling and you want your workpiece to be stationary said, other than basics of rotation. And we want that rotation to be under our control as well. So in order to do this, we have to secure this piece from moving in a variety of directions. Rather than use the axes and saying x-axis and z-axis and y-axis and a-axis and, and all the various axes uh, that, that we have to restrict the movement on, I'm simply going to use more common terms. So um, back is going to be towards the back of your work surface. Front is going to be towards the front of your work surface where you're at um, left and right can be left and right, and then up and down, or up and down, and then we have our rotational force again. These are all the directions of movement that we need to think about when we want to secure this piece. We cannot really leave any of those out. So how do we secure this piece from going backwards? Or, you know, it, it, these could be combined, such as, is it going to spin off in this direction, or spin off at an angle? These are all very bad things you don't want that piece doing. Um, that piece coming off and spinning at high velocity and you've got a sharp chunk of metal flying at you, safety glasses are no, um, that can do some damage to you. I mean, you can, you can break bones, uh, particularly with on, on larger lathes, you know, you can crack ribs and uh, do all kinds of, you know, it can get actually deadly having those pieces fly off. Here, um, with safety glasses on, you know, you might knock your teeth out um, you might bloody your nose, you might give yourself a nice cut or gash or bruise if the piece comes off and hits you. So you definitely want to think about work holding uh, each time you secure a work piece in there. Now we're going to look at a variety of work holding devices. And the first one we'll look at in detail in a following video is the three jaw chuck. Now I'm not going to go into the details in this introduction on the three jaw but I'm going to use it as an example of how uh, it can secure a workpiece. I'm just going to put it on there hand tight. Normally you would want to tighten that down with Tommy bars. So we have a couple of ways of securing these pieces. One is through what I'm going to refer to as a hard stop. Now a hard stop is simply something that the piece cannot move past. In our case, those hard stops happen to be the face of this jaw, as we've got this piece set right now. It can't move that way without blowing a hole through that chuck and the head and everything else. Not very likely, so that's a very secure hard stop. Our other hard stops, from a front-back perspective and an up-down perspective with the nature of the three jaw, are going to be the jaws of the chuck. They're providing that force. There's no way that that piece can move out of there unless these jaws physically break. So those are all hard stops. Now we also have a force of a friction stop in this case. That friction stop happens to be the jaws, but only friction is holding it from moving in a, a right direction in this case. So we're relying on the tightness of those jaws rather than their simple presence to hold it from slipping out in this direction. So that is more of a friction. We're relying on the friction between the jaw and the workpiece to hold it from moving out. If this piece were not flat um, on this end, if it were at an angle and we needed to hold the piece away from the surface of the jaw, so there's space in here, then we'd have a friction stop to the left as well. Um, that friction stop would be short before we hit a hard stop. If you're dealing with a smaller workpiece though, 
you're going to be dealing with the friction all the way through because there is a through hole on the headstock. So those are the, the, the ideas between um, the directions that we need to secure it. Now as we spin it, this is also going to be a friction based uh, hold. Again, we're relying on the friction of these jaws to keep it from spinning um, in a way that we don't want it to. So if this is spinning at a certain RPM with a chuck, we want the workpiece to spin at the same RPM. We don't want the workpiece to stop spinning while the chuck continues to move. That may not be a dangerous situation, um, but it will definitely damage your workpiece and, and possibly cause you to need to start over. So those are some, some items to consider there. The other thing to think about is tool force and the direction that the tool force is applying to the piece. This is going to um, make a big difference for us on how hard we need to secure it in different ways. For example, if we were to cut with this tool straight across and with 90 degrees, all of our tool force is headed to the left. Now we do have some rotational tool force there as well, which we will always have, but we don't really have because we're cutting in from here straight, we don't really have any tool force to the back. There's going to be minimal, but the majority of our tool force is to the left. Now if we were to do more of a roughing cut and cut at an angle, now we've changed those tool forces. Now that tool force is not only going to the left, but we are definitely putting more to the back. Something to keep in mind on, on how the piece may flex is in the, the angle of your cutter. Again, on the this becomes a lot more important also on the face. How are we cutting on the face? Are we going straight into the face and pulling straight out? If we're doing a cut like this, all of our force is to the front. That force to the front, we don't have anything over here securing it. We're relying on the leverage and the friction of these stops back here to secure it. Now what if we take that cut at more of an angle along these lines? If we take that cut at this angle, then the majority of our force is actually towards the headstock, towards the left. So that would be a safer cut on a long piece like this rather than going straight in and across. The same would apply if you're cutting in the other direction you wouldn't really want to cut straight in in that direction because then you're applying all that force out here on the edge and you're trying to labor the piece out. If you go in e even at an angle here this this isn't the best to cut to, to necessarily cut from the in to the out or sorry from the outside to the inside which is why in the introductory videos we talked about cutting from the inside to the out inside to the out and to not make a cut on the way in. You can make light cuts on the way in depending on how well the piece is secured and you can certainly do that but just realize that if you go from here in the majority of our force is again towards the back and that will cause this piece to possibly fall out depending on how well it's secured. Now that's a stubby piece secured on one end. also wanted to quickly uh, take a look at a longer workpiece, and this is um, a very, very thin workpiece. Um, I'm going to use it to demonstrate another principle here. Is in this case, we need not only worry about this end and its flex front to back and up and down, but we also need to worry about this other end over here and its front to back and up and down movement. That on a shorter short on a shorter piece those forces aren't nearly as bad. Now, as we get further and further out, those forces become harder to hold. How do we address those? So we'll, we'll be looking at each of those in specific fixtures and specific work holding methods on how we address that. The other force that you have to think about, particularly with longer pieces and thinner, slimmer pieces such as this, is the flexing force. So even if we have both ends secured very hard and solid, and it's not going to move on either end, a force of a cutter coming in in this direction 
will cause the middle of the workpiece to deflect away and bend slightly. This will lead to a less accurate cut. So these are the things that we're going to talk about um, in work holding and all the various methods and, and manners that we can do these. This is definitely something that you have to keep in mind each time you secure a workpiece to the lathe is make sure that you're securing it both front to back, up and down, and any combination of those axes, as well as left to right, and then rotationally.